Hey guys, so this weekend, and especially this morning, I wasn't feeling very well, so I kind of went on a, I ended up on a fixing stuff kick, um, didn't pull the camera out, but I ended up fixing a few GPUs, which gives us a few new project opportunities, so um, this one I've had for a while, and it would always crash after, after I booted, I was having a hard time figuring out why it was. First of all, there were a couple issues. First of all, the drivers weren't very well supported in Windows 98. This is a, so this is a GeForce 4 4200 Ti. But it turned out the main issue was that this card has been overheated at some point and has messed up some of the balls under the, um, under the GPU chip. The solder balls, that is. Um, and that's a relatively common problem I see on a lot of video cards, but um, and usually, I mean, the correct solution is to remove the chip, replace the solder balls, and solder it back on. And your mileage may vary with that. It's extremely difficult. In my case, um, I've I've used the bake it in the oven method with some success. But what I'm actually what I've actually done this time, here I'll show you on another video card real quick. What I've done this time is I take some of this. No, no clean flux and just drip it around the edges of the chip and then I take my my heat gun and heat up the entire cheap chip until all the flux burns away basically um, and what I'm hoping that this is going to do is clean up some of the impurities uh, some of the corrosion that might have gotten into that solder when it um, when it disconnected and help it as it heats up, basically bond again to the pads on the chip and the board. And honestly, so far, I've done a couple of them like this. I've got one in another computer that I've been running for a while with no issues. Um, but I did that to this one this morning and just heated it up pretty thoroughly and, and put it back together. and. Threw it in a, in a computer over there, and it seems to be working fine. So, um, I know in the last video we said we were going to put a different motherboard in this, but I think what I'm actually going to do is this would be a perfect match for this computer. It's the same colored PCB. This case has a slightly purple tint to it. The lights are all kind of purple. So I think it'd be cool to have just a completely purple computer. Purple's not really like my thing necessarily, but. It'll work out good. And then that frees up this card to go in one of the small form factor builds, which will be fantastic. That's that's something we definitely need to get going. Um, in other news, I also got a GeForce 6200 to work the same way. Well, sort of. Let me just show you that one real quick as well. And that's over here in, you can see that inside the GX150. Now, I added another hard drive and installed XP because I realized I didn't have a dedicated benchmarking machine that was running XP and had an HP slot. So, this is now just to just to make sure that AGP cards work before I uh, work with XP. I didn't realize there was, I, I thought most AGP cards were going to work just fine with 98. This one, this one and the 4200 Ti just did not like the drivers I had installed. I think it was because I had so many different versions installed. Um, but this card was a little more tricky to fix. Um, it had a bunch of extremely blown capacitors. So let me show you one of those. Do, do, do. Like that. You see how the whole top is blown. Come on. There you go. So you can see there the entire top is cracked. There's some fuzz coming out of it. I mean, these capacitors, every single one of them on this board was just absolutely destroyed. I don't know what happened to it. It's weird that they all went. Um, but I had a, a donor board over here. This is an FX 5200 or 5400, something. One of the FX um, cards that nobody likes. And it had all the right capacitors on it. And I've, I've tried to fix this one three or four times, and it's just screwed, so I decided to go ahead and and give it the old, you know, use its brains for parts. So, um, I 
just threw those capacitors on here real quick. Um, and then at, at that point, it still wouldn't even post. And so I actually had to go through and I, I put flux underneath the, the chip and baked it pretty good with the, with the uh, heat gun. Still wouldn't work. It would, it would post, but it would reset as soon as the drivers tried to initialize. Ended up cooking the RAM then the same way. And bafflingly enough, it seems to be working great now. It passes the tests. It performs about like I'd expect. It's not a great computer, but it'll be, or it's not a great card. It'll be a great card for something, though. I may see if I can get this working in a 98 build at some point. I, I kind of think that this one just had some screwed up drivers. Um, but now we've got another card that we can we can hang on to uh, for some of these projects. So I think I paid three dollars for this one. So. And I think I got the FX5200 for free, so I think overall that's that's a couple of good wins there. Um, there are a couple of these other GPUs that I've been working with that I haven't got working yet. So one of them over here, we've got a we've got a TNT2 um, that I think is. It, I mean, I think that's this one's just dead. And this is uh, Radeon 8500. I've never gotten this one to work. Um, I would suspect capacitors. This one has these weird electrolytic capacitors. Um, I forget what type they're called. Um, and it, it had a seized fan on it too, so there's a good chance it's been, you know, badly overheated. But then this heat sink is glued onto it, so we may work on this one later. For now, though, I think what we're going to do is keep testing this card. And then probably throw that GeForce 4200 Ti in in that computer over there and, and get that one running. And we might call it a day there. We might end up starting the next build, but it depends. So far, so good though. I haven't. I mean, I'm excited. I haven't got this many video cards to play with in a while. So this will be a good day. All right. You can see I got the car installed. Got the driver set up running in AGP 8X and seems to be working great haven't had any issues with it so we're just gonna leave it running some benchmarks here for a minute and I think this will be a really good case for it I really like that it matches the motherboard but it also seems to be a good range um, a good speed that this processor supports. So this is an AMD Sempron 2500 plus and I think it's running at 1.4 gigahertz is all. Um, very bottom of the line processor at the time. It is definitely faster than like a Pentium 3 and it's nice that it supports the faster buzz speed and faster memory but it's a little bit of a mismatch for some of the faster cards and it also it's just a little bit much for some of the slower cards, so there's kind of, I mean, a, a GeForce 4 Ti is a good kind of middle of the range, lower end XP card. You know, I think this is, this is a great match for this board. And it also works really well in this case. And the reason I say that, not just because everything's purple, but I have so many fans on here, mostly just because of the color, that the airflow is fantastic through this case. I don't see this card overheating ever again. Um, especially not with, you know, new thermal paste and all these fans going all the time. So I think this will be a really good fit for it. I like how it looks with the light off too. It's just a cool case. I'll have to do some research. I don't actually know if this is an older case or not. It has stickers on it. Somebody was running an FX5200 in here. Or FX, uh, sorry. An AMD FX4800, something like the 40, whatever. The quad core that was actually dual core. I'm just really glad this worked out. Getting some pretty good speeds on these benchmarks for what it is. Definitely something I would have really loved having in about 2003. 
Meanwhile, over here we've got this uh, 6200 G4 6200 working great. It just finished this benchmark up, and it looks like it's 48 48.66. Let me come over here and throw that in the uh, iMac, but. I know that's a lot faster in 3D Mark 2001 than a lot of the cards I've tested in that machine, so, oh gosh, 4866, there it is. I'm going to go ahead and save that and we can look at some of the other ones. I think we're definitely limited by the processor at this point, but I do see over here the clear computer. Um, and that's the one that we were just working on when I had an, an I, I had this Radeon 9200, uh, well, it's an, so it's an R92 LE, and this is one of these cards that everybody has one of these because they're cheap, um, but with some new thermoplast on there, this thing actually overclocks wonderfully. I think I got probably a 30% boost on it, overclocked, so, um, it, but overclocked all the way. It looks like the 6200 keeps up about with that score using a slower processor so and slower memory. So I think that's a pretty good win. Seems like a decent card. Should be plenty for some lower end XP stuff. It definitely beats out some of the, you know, the Radeon 7000. Uh, I'm coming back up here. It looks like it's about in line with some of the, yeah, it beats the GeForce 2 soundly, the unoverclocked R92 in the same board. I mean, as you can see, anything PCI Express that I've got in here is going to just absolutely destroy it. I don't, I mean, it's definitely kind of a mid 2000s or early 2000s card. But hey, I mean, for for three dollars, I'm really happy with that result. We'll find a good board to stick it in. I probably a Pentium Four type of deal somewhere. Sorry about the air conditioner noise. Um, but to my surprise, in this motherboard, um, it was so it was definitely CPU limited in the other one. In this one, it's almost twice as fast. I got twelve thousand in three D Mark two thousand, and. As you can see, almost 9600 in 2001, which puts it at faster than... Okay, so it's basically done, and I apologize. I'm really tired, end of a long day, but um, I think it's time to play some games on this thing. I'm just gonna go through a couple that I have installed so you can kinda see how it runs, and and uh, then we'll go over my impressions of it, and I, I'm i gonna try the whole B-roll, talk about the specs thing, so we'll see how that goes. So first of all, Midtown Madness 2. Not a very stressful game, it'll run on 98, um, but we have a few, We like, my whole family likes to play kind of a modified version of this. So you can see I've got the graphic settings pretty much all the way up, 1280 by 1024. Let me check my controls reverses on and we've got the cruise let me go with this modified TT file So this one's a little faster than your standard TT on this game, for sure. It makes it a lot of fun for its multiplayer um, capture the gold game mode, so we've had some crazy games with this and a lot of other good times. Darn it, I went off the end of the, uh, the map. Um, but there's there are a couple of really good tests for, uh, for some of this hardware. So now on slower machines, as I'm driving down the the highway here at 400 miles an hour, I'll see some. I'll start seeing frame dropping and stuttering as it tries to load the next frame. So even though the video card can keep up, the rest of the system is what's being stressed here. 
um, but even more so when I go the other direction off the bridge here. You can see it's starting to slow down. Oh, I hit that. Didn't mean to. But now that I'm flying across the map, it's actually working all right. Not too bad. I'll give it a minute to reset. We're just gonna go through, this is San Francisco, this map. Pretty accurate actually too. Yeah, this plays it extremely well. Very happy with that. Really can't complain. There are a couple of places that it'll pretty much always stutter and I've only seen one or two computers where it doesn't and that's right over here. For some reason, up near this church, yep, you can see it starting to drop frames. I don't know, it'll, hopefully it'll, I think I'm filming this in 60 frames per second. So hopefully you'll be able to see that, but as I approach this, um, you'll often see hard drive activity and yeah, it's, it's not too bad. But anyway, that's enough for that game. Um, what else do we got on here? Halo. So now this one, I did already try these um, before I did this, but I had to adjust the video settings. Let me just look at what I've got in here. Um, so this is just Halo Combat Evolved. I think I have V-Sync on. I don't think it was working very well. I've got the particles low. I've got it at 1024 by 768. ball mouse here that needs cleaned, but we're going to try it anyway. Good okay, grief. And my aim's offline, this mouse is not helping. Those Marines could use some help, Chief. Do what you do best. Am I the only guy that feels bad? <laughs> Excuse me, killing the grunts when they uh, when they say, you know, they're they're running away and they're like, help me! I'm like, oh, I feel like a terrible person. So I like the reflections, even though I turned off some of the specular filtering. I really like how some of these uh, these older Nvidia cards render these older games. I just think it looks it looks a little better with some of the textures they use. He's hiding. Doobie doobie. Anyway, that's enough of that. Um, and I, if it's struggling here, it's definitely going to struggle once you get off of the, the the boat and you're in some of the larger maps. I think this will, I mean, this is right on the edge of what this can play. It, it's definitely playable. It's faster than a lot of computers I played it on back then, and I could even turn down the graphics farther, disable a lot more of the effects and stuff, and probably have it be perfectly playable. This is, I mean, I used to play it on integrated cards on Pentium 4, it's just fine. So, um, so this is probably going to be, I mean, that's, I, w I don't know that I'd play anything way newer than that, so I would, I would imagine some of the like the first Half-Life and that kind of stuff would probably be great. Uh, early 2000s kind of games. Uh, finally, Direct, uh, DirectX, wow. Uh, Descent, Re the Remix version? Rebirth? Not Remix. Good grief, man. Um, and I shut it off, I'm gonna plug it in. This is a game I'm still learning, especially because I like, I, I have a joystick and controller collection and I like to screw around with all the different available options and as soon as I get used to one I switch for a different one for some reason so let me just double check to make sure my... let's go ahead and turn the mouse off skip the menus so I've got the frames the FPS counter here and I'm up at full resolution for this monitor and I, let me just see if I can remember what my keys are here here we are Screw you, Autobot. Ah, oh, 
Oh man, yeah, I'm sucking it up here. I'm not sure I like this controller for descent, to be honest with you. So this is a Logitech, uh, oh gosh, what is it? Oh, my, my spins are not working well on this. All right, let's try this. There we go, almost getting it. For the Xbox controllers, this one, this one shows up as an Xbox controller. I don't know if you can see it; it's kind of dark. But there's, um, we've got two joysticks here, a D-pad, four buttons, um, and then some two buttons and the two axes up here. And it's all right. I, I, I mean, I think the Xbox controller with the the one D-pad down here can be more intuitive because then you can kind of hit the side to side with you. I, I don't know. I mean, there's all sorts of things. I've Ultimately, I've got I've got a rudder and pedal setup um, that I'd, I'd like to try with with descent. But I mean, takeaway from this basically is that um, this this works great for descent and for mid top madness for a lot of the late '90s, early 2000s games. Um, and overall, I mean, for what it is, I think it's a it's a good matchup for this this motherboard and this video card. So definitely one I'm going to keep in the collection for a while. I like I like that it's all purple. Um, there was a computer a lot like this at a computer store that when when I was growing up that I used to just drool over um, in the in the late '90s, you know, early 2000s. And so this is I get some nostalgia playing playing this for sure. Um, so hardware wise. Let me get the lights on and change angles here, and I'll be right back with you. <clears throat> so the processor in this build is an AMD Sempron 2500 Plus, which is a socket 754 processor, and it should be running at 1.7 gigahertz, but while I was editing this, I actually found out that there's a BIOS issue and it's running at 1.4 gigahertz, so that's something I'll have to look into later. And this processor is in an a ECS Elite Group 755-A2 motherboard with a GeForce 4Ti 4200 AGP card running at AGP 8x speed, an 80 gigabyte Western Digital SATA 1 hard drive, and all of this is in a Sunbeam Tech acrylic case. Okay, I guess I wasn't filming any of that, but uh, my impressions on the hardware. First, the case. Um, the biggest issue I have with these cases is that they get extremely dirty. Um, the amount of crap I had to clean out of this, I mean, I, sp I spent hours. I had to disassemble every single piece and, and wash it all, scrub it all, put it back together, and it's still, every not once in a while, I see little pieces that have something stuck in them. Um, and that was partially because whoever owned it before was a smoker, but it, it also just, I mean, computers pick up dust, especially when you've got this many case fans and you got a lot of airflow through it, it's going to pick up some dust. Um, but on a good note, the airflow. Um, so I've got two fans, I don't know the, I don't know the size. These three came with the case. Um, they're all kind of the same purple color. And they're not too loud, especially for an older machine. I actually don't know exactly when this case was made, but we've got one intake here, two intakes there, and then we're exhausting out the back and exhausting through the power supply and then exhausting out the top as well. Um, and part of the reason when I put this case together that I had, I just put all these fans in here at the same time was because I was going to overclock. Um, and I, I actually did have, I had a Radeon 9200 in here that was overclocked a lot and that I wanted really good airflow through there because I was doing it with the, with the stock heat sink. Um, none of the parts in here are currently overclocked and I'm not going to considering 
this uh, this GPU we got running with a heat gun. So I think what we're gonna do, I mean, what I'm you know I'm still happy with the airflow because it, most likely this GPU burned itself to death, and I'm hoping that with the extra airflow through here, that probably I'm, I'd like to think that wouldn't happen again. Um, so now the the motherboard. Um, now these you can you could still buy new on eBay as of a few years ago, and I don't think this one had ever actually been used when I got it. And um, it, so far, I've had pretty good experiences with it. It's been pretty reliable. It doesn't support 98 very well, so I wouldn't recommend um, trying to use that. There are basically no drivers for it. Um, it does have um, AGP. 8, 8x support and it does a fantastic job of that. I didn't have to change any AGP driving strength or anything on there. I did never get the built-in sound card to work and that's that's kind of an issue for me so um, which means that the front panel headers currently don't work. I, I grabbed a random PCI card and I, I think it's a uh, just some C media just really generic basic card threw it in the PCI slot at the bottom um, so that it does have some sound and, and that gives me a a joystick port as well, which this motherboard doesn't have. So let's take a look real quick at the ports. We've got serial and parallel, which is nice for some of the older stuff. Um, USB 2.0 and Ethernet, which seems to be working great. On the board itself, we've got floppy and IDE controllers, as well as a SATA, uh, SATA 1 controller. And then we've got in later. Five um, PCI so slots and one HP slot, so one point four gigahertz. Have quite a bit and of honestly, and it it's a little bit slow for for, for what it is. It's the, it's definitely a lot memory. faster than the Pentium three I was testing um, this card in, but it just does not. I mean, the benefits are the memory controller is pretty good. It uses deep. one that's a. I think both of the ones I have are Semperons. They were the very first to support sixty four bit. I think I'll have to double check this. I'll put this in later. Um, but this one runs at like 1.4 gigahertz, and honestly, it's a little bit slow for for what it is. It's it's definitely a lot faster than the Pentium 3 I was testing this card in, but it just does not. I mean, the benefits are the memory controller is pretty good. It uses DDR memory and it'll run it at full speed. It's not the same memory controller type that they had in the later processors, so I don't think it, it's as good as that. I might just be completely talking out of my ass here, because um, it's been a while since I looked it up. I, I have another one that's like a 2.1 gigahertz, and it works uh, wonderfully. I have it in a different computer with a PCIe card in it. But is it something I would recommend you going out and building for your own retro computer? No, honestly. Um, that's where I'll, I'll talk about, that's actually something I want to go over in the next video, is how cheap can we make a really good retro computer for? All right, so that's basically today's video. Um, overall, what I recommend building a computer like this, not really. Um, the parts can be really expensive, especially the you know the GeForce 4 series, the weird processors um, for the weird socket, the case. I they're not things that I mean if you have them laying around or you get a good deal on them and they give you nostalgia, then sure. But ultimately, they are way way cheaper ways to have a much better XP gaming experience. And that's something that I actually want to talk about in the next video a little bit is, or in an upcoming video, is building a really cheap, really easy Windows XP computer. Um, so as always, if this is interesting to you, like and leave a comment and all that kind of stuff. Appreciate it. You have a good night.